This is a response to a Ben Shapiro post. It's a response posted by Gretchen Carlson. Gretchen Carlson used to be an anchor on Fox News. I believe she was let go because of her stance on guns. At least that's how the movie made it seem. Uh, that uh, Have you seen that Bombshells movie? No. That's a really good movie. You should watch that. Okay. It's, it's good stuff. Um, anyway, she's not at Fox News anymore. Uh, ben Shapiro is posting a clip about how he won't give up his AR-15. It's not a clip, actually. It's the full episode, and he's not going to give it up. And uh, Gretchen Carlson says, Ordinary people didn't have AR-15s before 2004. That's when the federal assault weapons ban ended, by the way. Mm -hmm. So before 2004, ordinary people just weren't, like in all time, in the history of the United States, ordinary people weren't allowed to have those. This is someone who used to be an anchor on Fox News. They're not some time-honored American tradition. They're a recent mistake that we could fix and save thousands of lives in the process. There are so many things wrong wrong inside of that. You'd have to find the thousands of lives that are killed by our AR 15s. And you wouldn't even be able to do that. Um, some time honored American tradition. It is an American tradition that the people have weapons like the military does because the whole purpose of us being able to have guns is so we can hold off the tyrannical mm -hmm. government. So that is a time honored American tradition. And then there's the whole people didn't have AR-15s before 2004. I mean, Remington has been making 223s for a long time. Well, there's the the AR, the, um, let me see, I believe this goes back to something around 1959 or so, and then they got really popular in the 60s or 70s. I did look up something, just a real quick thing. Um, two, this talks about them becoming a household name. Two lines of rifles, the AK-47, and Colt's AR-15 became two leading models of semi-automatic military-style rifles in the 1960s and 70s. Um, I do think they came out in the 50s, though, originally, although that could have been something like an AR-7 or 10 or whatever. Uh, thanks to U.S. law, civilians had access only to the semi-automatic versions of these rifles. And they just go through how everyone was able to get them until 1994. Bill Clinton signed the assault weapons ban, which outlawed the sale of AR-15s didn't take away all the AR-15s or semi-automatic rifles that people had at that time. It just outlawed the sale of newly built AR-15s uh, for 10 years, and then the ban expired. Now, they weren't as popular before the ban as a percentage of the guns that people were buying. I said this on Monday, I think, when you weren't you were sick on Monday. Uh, but I actually think that the assault weapons ban had a reverse effect from what people wanted. I think that it made people want to go out and get these rifles after they were not no longer banned, more so than they wanted oh, to the before. Sales him. increased exponentially. Yeah. So the the these are sales as a percentage of well, actually these aren't sales. These are production. Uh, so a percent of U.S. guns produced during that ban. Uh, you were more around 3% before the ban. You were like around 2% of U.S. guns produced before they were banned. So, yeah, they so weren't. So even while they were banned, it was still going up. <laughs> and then while they were banned, it still increased from about. Probably because they were preparing for when the yeah, ban ended. For about 2.5% up to 4% while they were banned. And then from that point on, they really started to to shoot up. And I actually think that it is because of the ban that these guns became so popular. Well, of course. But uh, Gretchen Carlson is just flat out wrong that people didn't have them before this. No, they weren't as, they weren't as common, but people had them. Yeah. So, so that was a dumb. <laughs> so that's, a, that's a dumb. That's part of dumb bleep oh, number one. Okay. That's part one of six of dumb bleep well, number she, one. She made a dumb mm -hmm. and then other people made a dumb about AR-15. And then now here's the, uh, the fine folks over at the view. <sighs> this is them talking after what the a shooting. What a great screenshot. Blow that up. Of course, saying things. How many opiates is she on? <laughs> wow. Actually, I would guess probably a lot, but I'm just making that up. I have no clue whatsoever. <sighs> um, Here's what they had to say. Look at those eyes. About AR-15s. Sarah didn't get a chance to weigh in on the uh, topic of what happened in Maine and uh, AR-15s. Yeah, I, I would love to see an assault weapons ban. Like President Reagan, I don't believe they're a sport or hunting um, uh, 
instrument. It's like shooting fish in a bucket, but that's my... But take. also, if you shoot with an AR-15, let's say you shoot it's a deer, you can't can... eat it. What? Uh, okay, hold on. We'll, we'll, we'll go back. We'll go back a little bit. But yeah. first off, why does an AR-15 make the situation like shooting fish in a bucket? Whereas another gun wouldn't be shooting fish. I only shoot fish in a barrel. Yeah. Uh, well, we're talking about buckets yeah, right now. And I don't you really, got fish yeah. in a bucket. To me, that pertains more to the environment that you're shooting things in. Like, it's different if you're shooting fish in a bucket as opposed to a barrel or as opposed to the ocean or yeah. a lake or something. So, so shooting fish in a bucket, as she said, would be like when you're talking about killing people in a small enclosed space, like they're all right there and you can just kind of shoot and hit someone. I don't know what an AR-15 has to do with that. Like, it seems like any gun would work like shooting fish in a bucket in yeah. a small area. Well, except for like a musket. Like that. Thing. You know, single load. <laughs> okay, here we go. Well, then they uh, said if you shoot them all, you well, that's, can't even eat them. Yeah, that's, you know? I'm going to back it up a little bit so we yeah. can hear that. You can't even, you like... This yeah. gold. That's and that's about. because these... Magazines they're producing now hold a million trillion. Well, and one round. Million chill, Let's trillion hear them bullets. Let's hear them say it. Real quick. Um, uh, instrument. It's like shooting fish in a bucket, but that's my. But take. also, if you shoot with an AR-15, let's say you shoot it's a deer, you, you can't can... eat it <laughs> because you basically demolish In addition the to that, but the hunt yeah. is about an actual difficult. That's actually not true. <laughs> it's not true at all. If you shoot a deer with an AR-15, you're not going to blow it up. <laughs> Just it actually make a really small hole. The confidence with which she says this. Like, I know. You, if you shoot a deer with an AR-15, you can't eat it. You're going to demolish the animal. It's, <laughs> it's, it's actually not true. Oh. All right. Anyway. Uh, well, and Bailey makes a good point. If you shoot fish in a bucket, you're going to lose all the water that's in there. Oh, yeah. You don't want to do that. Yeah. Just be, I mean, you kill all the fish uh -huh. then. So that's mean. Okay, then we have Kamala Harris. She's talking about um, what we should do. And she's in Australia because for some reason they had her come talk in Australia. And it's really what she says at the end of this clip right here. Uh, so let's just start halfway through. To local authorities. And as we gather details, we must continue to speak truth about the moment we are in. In our... <laughs> And the truth about the moment is that it is the moment that we are in. Yes. And it is true. Which no, is now. Today, the leading cause of death of American children is gun violence. No. The leading cause of death are injuries from guns, technically, for children in America. As long as you cut off the age at the specific spot they actually I, I think they go up to 18 on this one and so anyway they start to grab people who are technically adults uh, but no it's um injuries from guns and half of those are suicides yeah so she and says most are handguns yeah she the way most yeah. way way most of them are are handguns and half of them are suicides so when she says the leading cause of death is gun violence um, some of that violence is violence perpetrated by yourself to yourself, but whatever. The leading cause of death of American children is gun violence. Gun violence has terrorized and traumatized so many of our communities in this country. And let us be clear, it does not have to be this way as our friends in Australia have demonstrated. All right, so that's the Vice President of the United States talking about Australia. Uh, do you, I always go back to this, Charlie, but at one point in time, you were called a fear monger for saying that they wanted to take your guns. Uh -huh. You know? You remember that? Yep. And now you got the Vice President of the U.S. using Australia as her example mm -hmm. for how it doesn't have to be this way yeah. anymore. Right. Uh, that way they can control us the way Australia government yeah. controlled their citizens during the COVID lockdown. <laughs> There's yeah. one thing. Yep. Yeah. So much easier to control population. And then you got Australia who had like two mass shootings before they got, before they did their gun mandatory gun buyback program that they did. Um, don't quote me on that specific number. I'm probably uh, exaggerating that just a little bit. It was probably one. 
Um, but the <laughs> the other thing we don't have I to go doubled in, it. We don't have to go into why this would <laughs> work better in a place like Australia. But a couple things you could say. Not that we're even going to consider ever doing this in the U.S. or that it would ever even be possible. Uh, if you're going to take an island that has the population of the state of California and say that you're going to control the guns in that population, it would be way easier to do that than in a place that has uh, 10 times the amount of people, a uh, 2,000-mile-long border that's got like 50 miles of fence on it. And, um, you know, it's just way, way harder thing to do. Not that we would ever even consider doing that because it would be impossible in the first place to even try and do. There's freaking 450 million guns out there. Or Isn't she the just is. riveting, so, by the way? Like every speech oh she gives. God, so good. Just, I can't stop listening. She's technically the number two most popular person behind Joe Biden when it comes to who should run for uh, president. <sighs> All right. Then we got this girl. Um, I don't. Oh, Allison, maybe? Allie? Allie Samarak, Samarco? Samarco? Uh, 15 seconds here of her spoiling parts of your brain. And so she says that banning weapons of war on the street isn't about infringing on you. It's about protecting you. Mm. So Imagine you're in a bowling alley with a handgun and a perpetrator walks in with a military-style weapon and a bulletproof vest. There's literally no way you're going to be able to defend yourself. Banning these weapons of war on the street isn't about infringing on you. It's about protecting you. The confidence okay. in which these people speak. Yeah. Just look, somebody walks in with a bulletproof vest mm -hmm. and a military style rifle. Even if you've got a handgun, there's no, there's nothing you can do. There's literally nothing you can do. So there's one thing. This is a thing. Well, that... thanks, Alyssa. <laughs> Alyssa M. Marco. The opposite world now she is pretending like the world that she would create or people that think like her would create is that you wouldn't have your gun maybe you'd even have your handgun but then that guy wouldn't walk in because he wouldn't be allowed to have that gun mm -mm. you know but the actual world is imagine you're in a bowling alley and you have a handgun and a guy walks in with an ar-15 and what are you going to do to defend yourself her other real option is imagine you're in a bowling alley and you don't have a gun at all, and a guy walks in with an AR-15. Yeah. That's the real world that she's proposing because the government can't get all of the guns off the street. So I, I don't like pretending like that's even an, an option and playing that game mm -hmm. with her. Um, also, there is something, like it's not like a bulletproof vest is just, has anyone ever been killed wearing a bulletproof vest? Charlie, do you think it's just like, oh, I put this on, I can go into war and not worry about anything, you know? Yeah. Like, no, there's still, there's places. There's places where you can get hit. I guarantee you, people have been killed while they're wearing a bulletproof vest, mm -hmm. okay? And you could even slow the person down, or maybe even scare the crap out of them, something like that. She responds because a lot of people said things that we did. She says, literally, the replies on this show, how many Republican men actually think that they could actually take out a shooter with an AR-15 with zero training? And what her... Her alternative option is that you stay there and you wait like fish in a bucket <laughs> until the cops get there or the guy decides to leave. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. What's your plan, Allie? You're going to hold small children in front of you <laughs> as you make your way to the exit? Is that your plan? Yeah. <sighs> I'm glad that these people are outing themselves, though. Yeah. You know? Oh, sure. So you just put you just put her on a list. A person I would never talk to. There you go. She's on a list. <laughs> yeah. You made Charlie's list. Yeah. That's tough to do, you know? Yeah. Matt Gates. Do you know how many guns she probably could get, by the way, with the amount of Botox? That oh, she yeah. She could has have, in her face? have a whole arsenal. She could have in there. She could have gun safes full of guns. The question, you see, she's not worried about this because her face is bulletproof. 